So, good afternoon, everybody. And sorry if uh, this morning I cannot participate in the conference, but I have an IMD. So, I have to finish another document for my university because it was very urgent. And so, um, because uh, of the other speeches that I heard uh, yesterday, I prefer, particularly with respect to the abstract that you have, to split uh, the, my speech in one part more physical here in this speech, the other more logical uh, for the other speech in the next conference, because uh, practically all of you participate also to the other. In, in such a way, I think that uh, I prefer to deepen some questions, but otherwise uh, I, am, I was constrained to, to be less clear, because uh, the arguments are very important and a little also complicated. So, the third point uh, is uh, the Turing seminal work from the algorithmic computation paradigm to the natural computation paradigm. Um, <clears throat> so, um, after his fundamental work on the algorithmic computational paradigm that uh, everybody knows, uh, of Turing, in 19, published in 1936, uh, Turing worked for widening the notion of computation. In 1939, he uh, published his uh, doctoral thesis uh, in Princeton, made in Princeton with Alonso Church as director of the doctoral thesis, about the notion of the Oracle Turing machine. That is a Turing machine reached with the outputs of non-Turing machine computable functions, uh, like as many Turing machine basic symbols, and then the transfer hierarchy of uh, this horrible machine. So it's uh, practically a counterpart of the uh, um, ramified theory of time, uh, of uh, fundamental foundation of, of logic in uh, Russell type or Russell and, uh, um, and Ramsey approach. So in 1942, he wrote particularly in anticipation of connectionist, of connectionist artificial, artificial neural networks uh, by uh, proposing a computational architecture made by undefined interacting elements suitable for statistical training. Okay. And then, in 1952, he developed the famous mathematical theory of morphogenesis that is model of pattern formation via nonlinear equations. In the case are chemical reaction diffusion equations simulated by computer. And so I want to defend this part by integrating this uh, by the notion of uh, quantum dissipative quantum field theory, because uh, this theory is able to overcome a terrible problem related with this type of approach. That is, uh, a reaction diffusion equation are um, random, are noisy, so that they are very inefficient. Overall, in explaining a problem that me as a philosopher always had when I read the many papers about uh, uh, biochemistry, because you know that uh, the chemical forces are short range forces. And so, who is that puts the right molecule close to the reagent so that uh, something can happen, that is, the chemical reaction can happen? This is a terrible problem. And by reaction diffusion equation, that is uh, the normal way of dealing, we are particularly still in chemistry kinetics. On the contrary, we need chemistry dynamics. And this can be uh, granted by quantum field theory. And in sen uh, but quantum field theory, pay attention, not in the classical interpretation, 
that is as a second quantization that is equivalent to quantum mechanics is not equivalent at all is another approach to quantum physics and um, please I spend a lot of time in this speech for illustrating this point because it's very very important from many standpoints not only for the foundation of physics and uh, biology chemistry and biology but also from the computational standpoint and then and also logical standpoint so the part relating with the um, formal ontology of natural computation why formal ontology because if you speak about natural computation you are putting together in a one in one only framework causal necessity, causal relationship, natural, with logical relations. So that uh, you cannot use formal logic, but formal ontology, because we have to justify the jump from the natural realm of causality to the logical realm of laws. And this can be done only by modal logic and modal logic as a formal structure, syntactic structure of a formal ontology. But this part of my speech I can I don't give here. I give in the next uh, conference because it's more related with the with the solution also or a new solution of the problem of causal reference. Uh, because it's at least in a more uh, semantic and uh, logical sense. Uh, on the contrary, in this conference, I want to, in this speech, I want to emphasize uh, what is quantum field theory as uh, an, an alternative approach to quantum mechanics. So, for introducing also the distinction between natural computation paradigm versus artificial. Um, sorry, algorithmic computation paradigm. Uh, Dodik Krenkovic, a friend of mine, she is professor in uh, Sweden, with a very difficult name, <laughs> Sweden University. <laughs> and so it, she developed a lot uh, uh, this problem of the relationship between algorithmic computation and natural computation. And so the main distinction are this, uh, according to her and also to me, Open interactive agent based computational system in natural computation versus closed standalone computational system in algorithmic computation. Computation as information processing and simulative modeling in natural computation versus computation as formal mechanical symbol manipulation in algorithmic oh. computation. Wow. Uh, Simple manipulation in uh, algorithmic computation, adequacy of the computational response via self organization as the main issue in uh, computability theory according to the natural computation paradigm versus helping problem and its many equivalent problems as the main issue of uh, algorithmic computation. Fourth, intentional object directed pre symbolic computation based on chaotic dynamics in neural computation versus representation solipsistic symbolic computation solipsistic in the sense of Carnot uh, symbolic computation based on linear dynamics typical of early artificial intelligence approach to cognitive neuroscience according to the algorithmic computation paradigm and then the point that I want to stress now Dual ontology based on the energy information distinction in natural, physical, biolog biological, and neural systems in natural computation versus monistic ontology based on the energy information equivalence in natural systems. Because, of course, if you have a, a linear system, the distinction between energy information is only a way of, of speaking. <laughs> there, there, is not, there, are, there are equivalent descriptions. Uh, between in informational terms or in uh, dynamic terms. So think of the cellular automata, and uh, you understand. So 
a necessity of a new foundations in computability theory for making complementary these dichotomies, like uh, wave theory and corpuscular theory of light in quantum mechanics, by considering in one only relational structure both causal and logical relations, as the same notion of natural, that is causal process, computation, that is logical process, process suggests. Uh, the cognitive neuroscience slogan from synapses to rules. Okay. A typical case of such a required complementarity is the reference problem in logic between meta language and object language, in epistemology and ontology, between logical and astrological physical conceptual entities. So, let deepen a moment the dual ontology of quantum physics. So I want to, <laughs> what means a dual ontology? The power of formal causes ordering relation among acting and material causes. I use this with my students, sorry, but I think that is very useful also for each of us. Think of this sequence. I choose a Chinese girl because I, I showed this, this line first time in Shanghai University, normal university. So the result of this ordering, sequential ordering, is this, nothing. But if I change the ordering, I can make a catastrophe. So this is formal cause, according to the Aristotelian approach. It's an ordering relation among acting and material cause without any uh, violation of uh, um, conservation principle of uh, physics. So form are not acting cause, it's ordering. ordering. And ordering in quantum field theory means a, a very deep uh, idea because it is related with uh, quasi-probabilities of Wigner distribution. So that ordering is something that cannot be reduced to the classical set theory approach uh, to the ordering relation. So the historical precursor of the dual ontology is Aristotle. The dual ontologies versus monistic Democritus and Newton and dualistic Plato and Descartes Every physical entity, event or substance, is constituted by matter and form. Forms do not subsist, like for Plato, but are educed by an acting cause from the potential infinity. The nice definition of potential infinity in Aristotle, recalling Cantor one, it was discussed yesterday being finite and ever always different. A random sequence. Being finite and ever always different. Think that at, at this age there was the shocking discovery of irrational numbers, destroying the might of Pythagorean, of Pythagorean theory of numbers, and also Platonic. The irrational. So the irrational numbers are characterized by an infinite decimal expansion of uh, non-recurrent or aperiodic. And so, uh, ah, sorry, um, the, I didn't say that the, um, the character, so that uh, the, the Greek is, uh, is not, uh, so, a counter definition of uh, potential infinity as the indefinite variation of the finite. It's very similar to Aristotelian one. But the first matter, that is the dynamis, underlines the reciprocal transformability of elements against atomism. Uh, according to Aristotle, of course, water can be transformed into fire, of course, uh, because there is some. Uh, hydrocarbon in the, in the water. 
and the fire into air and the air into in the earth so that uh, the elements cannot be the ultimate uh, basis of reality but is necessary some continuum field okay <laughs> like in uh, Einstein idea uh, is necessary some some potential matter material reality underlying the reciprocal transformability of each element into the other and uh, is dynamis uh, this in greek is dynamis underlying the reciprocal transformability of elements against atomies and uh, uh, what is by cutting and making recurrent that is stable a subset of the random and stable sequence of matter states say Aristotle it is like the race is or the day is because they are always becoming something different so that they are in potency and also in act and then uh, the other quotation the entelekeia corizei that is how is it possible because it's not possible to derive the diversity from identity according the famous uh, antinomy of one and two in Plato metaphysics and so the powerful idea of Aristotle is made the opposite to extract to define the identity by making recursive recurrent the difference that is the randomness according to our approach the always being different of the matter substratum so this is a, a simple explanation okay the first uh, sequence is uh, casual and then if i cut and make recurrent okay i extract a form from the matter and uh, of course there are a, a matter is very is in potency to infinite form okay this is the action of the of the heavenly bodies, okay, of the dynamic order in the dynamics of the elements in the earth, uh, the, according to the ancient cosmology of Aristotle. But what is important here is the notion, the ontological notion. And so, deduction of form from matter, deduction, not deduct, deduction, because there is no law. It's impossible to have a law in this. Deduction of form from the matter by acting causality. Is like the symmetry breaking of the quantum vacuum in quantum field theory. Order from the disorder. Necessity of including a thermal bath in the overall Hamiltonian of the quantum system evolution. And so we have uh, a dissipative question. This is uh, the deep idea uh, in which there is the difference between uh, quantum field theory quantum mechanics so of course the precursor of the dual ontology is the it from bit of uh, will you know okay and uh, i was lucky because i interacted with him many times when i was in uh, Princeton. and so uh, you know this quotation is very famous i think that is a useful to read okay but this is uh, a, a classical quantum mechanics approach to the dual theory because uh, it suppose uh, is the, this is the notion of quantum computing and quantum mechanics uh, it is related to the decoherence of quantum wave function okay uh, of course if you use the decoherence at last you can implement an oracle to the, to the machine at last. It deals only with syntactic Shannon information. This is a Rovelli statement in his famous paper about the relational interpretation of quantum mechanics. It suppose an observer. Information for who? And there is the open question, the limited evolution of the quantum wave function say tegmark no? it's famous so this implies an infinity of information content 
of the quantum wave function. If you have a unitary evolution. Versus the double demonstration by Lloyd, based on the actual volume of the universe divided for the unit of Planck, and more deeply by Hawking, Bekenstein, and Entropin, um, demonstrating that the uh, quantity of information is proportional to the surface of the horizon, not the volume of a black hole and then of the universe. Okay? of the finite quantity of the actual information in the universe is uh, pay attention because this, uh, this estimation are of the same order 10, 10 power 122 so then Davis in his last book proposed if, uh, if it is not a new constant of nature but in any case uh, if uh, we are a boundary in the actual information of the, of, the, of the universe. How is it possible to speak of the unitary evolution of the quantum wave function? So, it is a deep mistake to conceive a quantum field theory as an equivalent representation of quantum, quantum mechanics. That is the famous second quantization. Why it is a deep mistake? Because, uh, and I am quoting Michiello, we do my collaborators from Salerno University. In quantum mechanics, the phenomenon theorem states that for systems with a finite number of degrees of freedom, all the representations of the canonical commutation relations are unitarily equivalent. This means that they are physically equivalent, namely the representation of the commutation relation are related by unitary operators and, as well known, physical observables are invariant under the action of unitary operators. Their value is therefore the same independently of the representation one chose to work. Such a choice is thus completely arbitrary and does not affect the physics is going to describe. The situation is quite different in quantum field theory where the von Neumann theorem does not hold. Indeed, the hypothesis of finite number of degrees of freedom on which the theorem rests is not satisfied, since fields involve, by definition, infinitely many degrees of freedom. As a consequence, infinitely many unitary equivalent representations of the, uh, of the CCR are allowed to exist. Quantum mechanics does only describes a system presenting physically equivalent state spaces. That is not, that is one only physical phase. This necessitates using quantum field theory in treating systems with many stable phases. For instance, in uh, condensed matter, crystal, superconductor, ferromagnets, organic matter, Organic matter is very nice because it is the very nice hypothesis for explaining why all the, the biomolecules are active in water and why our body is made by 70% of water and more than 90% of the number of molecules of water uh, by the idea that the problem of diffusion can be solved by quantum field theory in this way. That is, uh, because the water and uh, uh, organic matter are characterized by quantum electric dipole. Sorry, uh, yes, um, quantum electric dipole. So that uh, uh, if you have a correntization wave, <laughs> that is a Goldstone, Goldstone field, propagating in water, of course, uh, you make resonance in phase, the molecules of the same phase, so that they can be made closer to the optical reactor so that you resolve the problem of diffusion. A, a, a very nice mathematical model is about the cytoskeleton. This is developed by Weitel inside. Because if the coherence domain is under a given threshold 
for which there is no parentization. If it is over a threshold, all is the domain is completely coherent. Co but if it is within the threshold, uh, the, um, the coherent wave propagates in a branching way so that it can attract molecules oscillating on this phase and so form the micro microtubules tube of uh, Roosevelt. <laughs> okay. And uh, we have a very, a very effective dynamic modeling of the change also of this uh, of the cytoskeleton. This is a typical, a typical example of how powerful is the use of quantum field theory in chemistry. Of course, because uh, it's in real time, because they are, um, mm, are Goldstone boson, so that uh, they, uh, they are my macroscopic phenomenon entangled, because the entanglement at macroscopic level depends on the quantum bosons, on the quantum phenomena underlying. So, uh, but now I, I come back on the new approach between micro and macro in quantum field theory with respect to quantum mechanics. So, what we need is to pass from the Schrödinger function, so this is psi, sorry, in Greek, uh, to Wigner function. Main physical character of Wigner function as to the psi function of Schrödinger, which is, it is defined on the phase space of the system. On the phase space, because it has to represent a different stable state on the system according to the dynamics. And with Schrodinger, you cannot do this at all. Suitable for representing a system with many stable phases, coherent and less coherent and so on. Main mathematical character of Wigner function as to psi is it uses quasi-probabilities. And so we come to the axiomal choice of yesterday. And so suitable for a mathematical representation of the semantic information as to the only syntactic one of classical probabilities and of Shannon information. Why? Because you change the elements for your set by this idea. Sorry. Which are the axioms of the probability theory? First axiom. The probability of an event is a non-negative real number. Of course, Wigner distribution use negative probability as a measure of impossibility. Originally it was because uh, he used it, uh, the big Wigner distribution was used as an alternative to Shannon for classical quantum mechanics uh, um, uh, problems so that is if you have the position with the positive probability the, uh, the energy is uh, with negative and the reciprocal. The second axiom is the assumption of unit measure that the probability that some elementary event in the, in the entire sample space will occur is one. Of course, you can have this uh, both with negative and positive probability. Ah, it is nice that uh, now Wigner uh, distribution I use it a lot <laughs> in uh, economics <laughs> after 2008. Too big to fail. They failed. <laughs> so that now the models use <laughs> also a measure of impossibility or relative impossibility because what was impossible happened. And then what is important, the third axiom, that is the, the assumption of sigma additivity. Any countable sequence of pairwise disjoint, that is, all the disjoints are defined. And Wigner distribution, no. 
And this is very powerful because why? Because of course, uh, without uh, the choice set, you have uh, no combinatorial calculus. But <laughs> you have also combinatorial explosion of the time of calculus. This is the problem. Combinatorial explosion. Because why? You have not the possibility of rearranging. Rearranging the number of elements of your distribution. By quasi probability this is possible. Physically, by quantum vacuum, this is possible. Okay? For this reason, it's so powerful from the computability theory. Because in principle, and now we, we see how, by the doubling of the algebra, you can avoid any, any problem of uh, combinatorial explosion on time of calculus by rearranging your filter. Okay, the support of your predicates directly on the input. And this can be done by the doubling of algebras in quantum field theory. This is the solution to the problem of reference. So, the actual quasi probability, quasi probability distribution is a mathematical object similar to a probability distribution, but the relaxing sum of the axiom. That is the first and the third axiom. And so, essential ingredient for completing Schrodinger notion of information as the entropy. That is not only free energy, the entropy. But the entropy is related with ordering of its storage as two non equivalent states. The notion of the entropy, this famous notion of shedding of the entropy, is not only free energy, of course, it's necessary free energy because the Maxwell demo make it work, of course. But uh, it's necessary also the ordering for having information. Information is not only free energy. This is true only if you are in the linear approach in which energy and information are superposed and so are absolutely equivalent and then reciprocally interchangeable. So the proper dual ontology of quantum field theory, the main distinction between energy and information in quantum field theory is related to the distinction between, it's very famous now with the Higgs boson, the gauge bosons, that is a photon, and then vector bosons of weak energy, you know, photon is electromagnetic energy. The W and Z bosons of weak energy, very short range because they're massive, so very massive. And W has the mass equivalent to a, an atom of iron. <laughs> it's, a, it's absurd how massive is, is uh, W. Uh, uh, gauge bosons are energy or matter vectors that is quanta of the respective force field. But there are the Goldstone's boson as quanta of information I, that is of long range ordering correlations of collective modes, for instance in crystals, depending critically on the temperature and all compatible with the ground state of the system because they are not quanta of energy. They are quanta of correlation modes of the energy uh, distribution, the energy dynamics. They are information, not matter. But this is a dual ontology. And open with the ground state of the system, so that are very stable. So to vanish with the order of phase they mediate. So that they do not obey the first principle of thermodynamics, are immaterial in the sense of uh, Wheeler. Even though they can be measured to make scattering, causal interact with the force gauge fields. In fact, X boson depends on this. By the possibility that uh, in a Goldstone field, interact with the young milk field and the result is a massive gauge boson that is, is a, sorry, is a massive X boson. By, in this way, we can 
give mass to the gauge boss and so on to avoid the, the Goldstein theorem because the Goldstein theorem, you know, suppose that the gauge boson are all not massive and this is against the experimental evidence of the WZ boson because photons and, uh, and gluons are not massive but uh, WZ, yes and so on. this is uh, the X mechanism Despite uh, the ugly mathematical character of, of his theory, uh, the same, uh, oh, well, is, uh, it is, uh, uh, and so, X, uh, uh, a friend of mine, I spoke with him uh, just uh, last week, said that uh, it is necessary to rewrite the theory of foundational mathematics for complex system to, over to overcome the ugliness of his theory, because it experimentally works, so it's mathematics that must change. <laughs> Okay, it's like in your time, <coughs> invented the calculus for, uh, for, uh, because uh, uh, in classical mechanics, the calculus works, so that we have to change mathematics, not physics. <laughs> so now, uh, from micro to macro, that is, uh, why, uh, to summarize, uh, while uh, in quantum mechanics uh, the passage is uh, with the coherence of uh, the quantum veil, here is the very normal because what is uh, a, a phase of the field at the macroscopic level corresponds to a concentration, to a density of bosons at the quantum level. So that uh, you can rewrite the quality particle wave uh, in the termination relationship without any mysteries because particle with this de Broglie or shading away what is this de Broglie is a probability wave okay but this is a mathematical abstraction effectively in quantum field theory this is a force field very very normal and so also the also the entanglement is without any mystery because when there is coherence of course, you represent the system in terms of uh, phase of the field. When there is an coherent, of course, you represent in terms of quantum particles, that is, to each particle corresponds is a uh, field. And this is a, a quotation of Chini. <laughs> uh, why should one take the modulus square of a wet amplitude in order to obtain the corresponding probability. We can now say, we can now say that there is no longer need of an answer because there is no longer need to ask, to ask the question. And so, the algebra co-algebra double in principle, very simple, any Wigner representation of a quantum system implies the splitting of the coordinates with respect to time into coordinates going forward and backward in time and so apart from the mathematical <laughs> formalism that is very nice but not very complex but very elegant uh, in a dissipative non-equilibrium quantum system there are in principle infinitely many quantum vacuums ground or zero energy states on each of which a whole set of non-zero energy states or state space or representation states can be built each input triggers one possible irreversible time evolution of the system by inducing a symmetry breakdown in one quantum vacuum, that is, by inducing an ordered state and coherent behavior, effectively freezing some possible degrees. And so, uh, practically, uh, this formula is very nice because he calculates uh, the number of A, A are the number of bosons, of constant um, bosons in the algebra and in corresponding algebra because practically if an input acts on a quantum um, random state it constrains some coherent oscillation that propagates also in a chaotic way so that uh, we can have also an explanation of uh, the dissipative structures of uh, Prigogine that otherwise you know that are very good phenomenologically but from the mathematical standpoint overall in pregogen explanation absolute micro entropy in no sense 
On the contrary, this way, it becomes uh, possible to explain this hyperdi structure. Also in this institute, in the physical institute here, there are some, some people working on the same idea. And um, so, uh, the change of paradigm is this. End of the mechanistic paradigm of Democritus Newton of physical body as a particle moving in the mechanical vacuum. On the contrary, notion of quantum vacuum related with the three third principle of thermodynamics, strong distinction between energy and information, gauge bosons and fields versus golden bosons and fields. And then uh, the Prigogin idea, because uh, of course uh, this, uh, is, this is also a foundational theory of uh, um, the secret structures. Of course, for passing to the relativity, special relativity, to, to general relativity, there is uh, this moot hypothesis. Uh, is a Nobel Prize in 2006 for the study on the quantum radiation that uh, interpret uh, in, the, in, the, in the framework of the, of the holographic universe gravitation as a, a entropic force related with the equipartition of energy and so that with temperature. <coughs> of course, this is an hypothesis, but very nice also because the necessity of uh, supposing that it explains very naturally also the dark energy. And uh, sorry, now it's not possible to explain the notion of information semantics. Uh, only I want to show only this this figure. Okay, because uh, in Florida approach to the information semantic theory. You avoid the famous uh, barriller karna paradox because you, know, you, you use a notion of uh, contingent truth, logical truth, and uh, using a regular distribution. Okay? <laughs> and this is uh, the problem of uh, parallel computation because uh, the, the famous Psyvanian uh, Pops theorem of uh, it demonstrates that it's not possible uh, it's not possible parallel computation why? because you cannot grant that if one, at least one point of your input falls inside the disjoint the fixed disjoint of your field but if you use uh, quasi okay and this is the non-solution, the connectionist architecture of this problem. This is stupid solution. Well, because uh, in back propagation, the second layer, see all the input. <laughs> so that you have the problem of convergence. And then you use a very, very, very clever idea, no? You use uh, a, a sigmoid, you make uh, a, a Taylor expansion so that you have all the order of correlations, nice idea. But when you converge, boom, because there are too many all the correlations orders. I need the necessary correlation orders. And by the, by the mechanism of the doubling, this is possible. Because I adapt the filter to the input itself. Okay, but about this, <laughs> I speak in the next uh, speech. Okay, thank you so much.